Right, so this one's going to be a, a fairly simple stream today. Uh, so uh, it's again another another nuke. Uh, sorry, another map. Right. So today we're going to have a nuke. So this is going to follow the same format from every other week. We are basically going to go over a map overview. We're going to talk about zoning, which is something we talk to we talk about every single time. It's about what to do after you take control, or if you're on the CT side, if you're trying to retain uh, your site control. Then we're going to have a talk of map control for the CT and T side, and then we're finally going to move on to uh, CT setups and T setups. Uh, so we're basically going to get a nice overview of the map, <clears throat> see what's important, hopefully see what's not so important, and uh, that should give you the options that when you're thinking about where to play, how to play, that you have a couple more ideas going into uh, every new game. Uh, this should hopefully benefit if you're individuals playing or if you're in a team, this should benefit both sides. So let's start off. Uh, Nuke. Nuke is a map with uh, five map entrances. So if we look at this board right here, uh, we can basically see that we've got, oh, let's get out of full screen. We can see that we've basically got five places that the enemies can come. So if we put the enemies in green, they could come through lobby uh, and go through the um, the small hut. They could come through lobby and go through door, for example. They could come outside, either over silo or outside, and then go into uh, the main entrance. They could come ramp and go straight through ramp. Or the final entrance is basically uh, down into in towards squeaky and obviously down to B. So to understand the map, if people aren't aware, this is obviously nuke. Uh, we have uh, the T spawn, and then you have your lobby ramp and outside, and then this section right here is obviously the B site. So this is leading down. If you go from ramp down, then it comes this way through, and if you're going outside, then it obviously leads this way through. And the vent is obviously here to here. So if anyone's confused, that is the explanation of this map. So there's five entrances, which, as we know from previous maps, this is going to mean that with five players. If you're holding passive, you can hold all five areas without too much pressure. Now, what that does mean, obviously, there's something we have to be aware of, is if you have five players watching all one position each, and the enemy decide to go all through one position, then as a single CT player, you're going to have a hard time holding off against five, which is why Nuke is another one of those maps which you sort of sometimes have to get some form of map control, or at least you need to know what the opponent's doing. So information is incredibly important on a map like nuke um and we spoke about this before when we talked over mirage it's it's going to be important at some points to take map control so we will get to that in the in the future but the basics are there's five areas where the enemies can come into the sites uh, and we need to be aware of these five areas uh, we need to be thinking could the enemies be in these positions and if so then uh, maybe pushing or trying to gain information to figure out if they're there or not so General T site setups. Uh, what we're looking at here is so a 112 and a 113. Now, what I mean by that is let's say you're playing T site. Typically, what you're going to end up finding is you'll have one player, uh, what did I say, 122. Two. So you'll have one player towards ramp. Here's your one. You'll have two in lobby. So you might have one, for example, watching the entrance right here to make sure no CTs are pushing. You'll have one watching door to make sure no uh, people are pushing door. And you'll have two outside. Um, now, this is a very typical setup because what it allows you to do is these two players here can throw utility. They could come outside and throw utility to help the outside guys. The outside guys can easily come inside if, for example, a kill is made, or and the ramp guy can either gain information or potentially exploit the single guy holding ramp uh, by taking a kill and then pushing. So this is one of the most typical setups that you'll see as far as defaults go. Uh, and the other one is basically a modification of that where you'll have three outside, potentially one on silo and two below. And then one inside watching both uh, both these angles right here to make sure no one pushes or potentially trying to gain information and cause uh, a headache for the opponents. And one towards ramp again, making sure no one pushes or potentially trying to get a pick onto the solo hold holding CT. So they are two typical defaults. Obviously... There's no point going into much detail about them. Uh, we'll get onto that at a later point in this episode. But what you need to know is that 
there are more options and uh, just because they're the most typical options that there are available doesn't mean that you should always stick to those because they have their strengths but they also have their weaknesses which we will get into later on in this lesson so general ct site setup is basically only one setup and it's done pretty much across all levels of counter-strike so you'll see this all the way from basic open teams on ESEA um, all the way up to the professional league so you'll typically have one towards ramp you'll have some form of two in A so it might be both heaven it might be one below potentially on hot it might be both below maybe one on default area and one maybe towards vents or towards this door it's any form of variation of two on A You'll have one dedicated to outside, so that could be anywhere on outside, here, here, potentially here, outside of the A main. Uh, just watching to make sure no one sort of takes out, because outside control with no contest, and then one float. So the float has the option to basically go anywhere. He could go ramp, uh, he could go underground towards B and come up secret uh, to help the outside guy. He could basically go into A. It's one float, it's a single float that basically does whatever he's needed to do. And this is what makes the CT side so flexible on this map is that because you always have a float player or you will typically always have a float player on the CT side, you can do any form of aggression that you like. You just need to move that player basically to where you need them. You might potentially need to move two players if you're doing any form of aggression, uh, but it's easily done because you always have one player ready to, ready to be in the positions that he's needed to be. So that's your typical CT side setup. Again, there are other setups, but for the CT side, this is going to be basically the one to go for. What teams usually get wrong when they're looking at this sort of floating system with uh, the four static and the one float is this float player isn't doing enough of the correct stuff. So there's a hundred different positions this player could be playing. And typically when you watch a lot of teams, if you watch professional demos or you watch uh, sort of tier, tier 2, tier 3 demos, maybe the MDL uh, league and ESEA, you will find the the float player is typically the one not being in the positions when needed. And this is what makes a weak CT site. So we will get into that in the future and we can have a look at some different setups uh, when the time comes. Oh, zoning. Now, we talk about zoning every week when we go over maps. Uh, zoning is in my opinion, one of the more important things that I teach uh, when I'm looking over maps because it has its uses, it has really strong points that you need to look out for, uh, but this is incredibly dominant in Nuke uh, when we're looking at zoning. So again, I'll explain like every week what zoning is so that we can uh, reinforce the ideas. There's two types of zoning in my head. There's primary zones and there's secondary zones. So I'm going to give you a basic explanation of what they are and uh, and I'll show you a couple of examples in the game. So primary zones are areas which are connected to a site, which as a counter terrorist will allow you to retake the site easily. And as a terrorist will allow you to stop the enemies from retaking the site. So let's take the A site, for example. If as a counter terrorist, you have control of heaven, then you can easily throw utility from heaven into the A site to perform a good retake. If you have, let's say, um, hook control or um, squeaky control then again it's easy to throw flashbangs you could potentially throw a flashbang which let's say lands in this location here behind the vent and then you could push out and attack uh, from this angle if you're on the CT side it's easy to attack from vent uh, from the vent area if you have control of secret and again if you have control of main then you can throw molotovs you can throw flashbangs you can throw grenades which all land towards a default area you can throw smokes. You can basically do anything you want when you have some of these positions. And if we flip that on its head and we look towards the T side, if again you have any of these positions on the after plant, it's going to make it more difficult for the enemies, uh, for the CTs to retake that site. So that's the basic concept of a primary zone. And if we look at the basic concept of a secondary zone, it's anywhere where you rotate between one site to the other. So in order to get from A to B, you would go through vents. In, uh, you'd go down vents and either towards single door or towards double door. Uh, if you wanted to get from ramp uh, to, to B, oh sorry, if you were heaven and you wanted to go down to B, you would go through ramp. And if you were, let's say, main or outside and you wanted to go down to B, then you would have to go through uh, secret. So these areas in which you're rotating through a certain point, let's say ramp, let's say vents, and let's say secret, 
These are all areas which I class as second secondary zones, and it's what you as a terrorist should be trying to exploit the enemies rotating through those areas. And as a counter terrorist, you need to be aware of enemies potentially exploiting you while rotating through those zones. So that's the concept of primary and secondary zones. So I'll quickly highlight these again so that basically we have a clean map and we can talk over them. So we've got we've got for A site, we've got the hut, we got secret, we have main, and we have heaven. For the B site, we have the the ramp, we have the single door, we have the double door, and we have control. Now, there's lots of different names for, for control, but I will typically call it control as it is a control room uh, when you look at it in game. But each site has four primary zones. So if we look, let's talk about the CT side and basically keeping hold of your primary zones on the A and B site. So let's talk over. Let's talk over the A side first. So typically, what you're going to have is if you're a a, a terrorist when you're playing on. Uh, sorry, if you're a counter terrorist, if you're playing on uh, the A site. Typically, you're not going to be in a very good position in order to hold these areas. So let's say the enemies push in. It's going to be very hard to potentially take main or to hold main control if you're not in main. It's going to be hard to hold heaven control if you're in heaven. If you're not in heaven, if you're, let's say, out here or you're potentially on default, you can't do anything about giving up that site. So this is where nuke is a little bit different to other, uh, other maps. So if I give an example of Mirage, if you're let's say on a site on mirage let's say the triple stack boxes and the enemies do an execute onto your site you can easily back up and leave the site whereas on nuke it's a lot harder to back up from your position your defense on the ct side and go into a primary zone so this is something we have to really be aware of uh, when we're playing on the ct side uh, and trying to keep out for our primary zones so it's very easy for the opponents after they've taken a site to hold a site, which makes retaking on this uh, particular map very, very difficult. Which means you either have to have incredibly solid defense, or you have to be prepared already to be in your primary zones if the enemies do an execute. So, how we can do this, if you play from heaven and they do an execute, you can easily jump back into heaven and secure and make sure that they don't take it. If you're, let's say, on the A site, uh, you can't really do anything apart from basically push if you want to hold a primary zone uh, to allow a good retake, which will potentially end in you dying. Or you can already, let's say, play in main. And that way, if they do an execute, they'll typically throw a smoke which lands here anyway, which means you can sit behind the smoke and wait out your turn. So, otherwise, the two other primary zones, they're very difficult to get. If they're doing an execute onto the site, you're typically not going to have them. The only really way, real way that you can take control of these areas as a counter terrorist is if you push from ramp uh, to rotate through instead of rotating through heaven, or you push uh, outwards uh, from outside and behind into lobby and then get one of these two positions. So the A site is incredibly difficult to retake if the enemies have taken it because they can basically keep throwing Molotovs heaven, they can keep the smoke up on main, and the only way that enemies are coming through lobby is if they basically rotate through the long rotation points, which is going to cost them time, and it's usually quite obvious when they are doing so. So, that's what to do as a counter-terrorist. You can either be fully prepared and already be in your primary zones, or you can... Uh, either be on site and fight to the death basically they're your two options it's very very difficult to push if the enemies are pushing you because they're going to be coming typically through these primary zones anyway so it's going to be very difficult to keep them or to take to retake those now if we look at the b site we come down to b uh, it's a little bit of a different situation typically when you're holding the b site as a counter terrorist you'll already be in one of these primary zones. It's very rare that you're going to sit on the site and wait in for the opponents to take it because it's usually very dangerous to you. They can easily throw Molotovs, throw flashbangs, throw nades and get you out of those positions easily. So typically when you're holding B and uh, you're waiting for uh, the terrorists to come in, you might already be in radio, you might already be in double doors if you're holding, let's say, uh, up towards a Secret. You might already be in... Um, already be in single uh, or you might even already be the ramp player so typically on the b site it's better to hold from your primary zones and if they take the site leave it and then wait behind them and make sure that the enemies don't take them the the key there when you're looking at primary zones is 
secure them, do not let the opponents take them because it's going to allow your teammates to rotate in and perform a better retake. Now let's look at the terrorist side. Basically, what can we do in order to, uh, to push the site past the point of the plant and stop the enemies from retaking? So we're going to go in the server for this. So we talked about the A site. The two main points in which the counter-terrorists are going to want to rotate to, or the two main areas which w it will happen, is heaven and is, ram uh, is, uh, is main. So main is a fairly simple one. You could potentially just smoke deep main, and you could take main control. Fairly simple, um, fairly easy. Uh, a, re a really good one to take if you're a terrorist, because it stops the outside player from easily taking it. Now, if you throw a smoke here, you could basically, if they're set behind that, you can throw mollies, you can throw nades, uh, you can you can basically push them back if you don't have control of main. You can still push them back with utility. Now heaven, that's a more difficult one. Now you could go for a double boost. Let's say you could double boost and get a guy up on the rafters and go into heaven, and you could take it that way. Sure. However, that's usually not an option due to timing. Uh, it's very difficult to coordinate that midway through a round just after you've taken the plant. So what I would suggest is if you're coming into a site, you've secured the plant then you could recycle mollies. Every time you throw a molly up there, for example, if you're in the after plan, I don't know, you're sat, let's say, here watching main, as that molly's going down, you could potentially throw one up. And you could just keep recycling molotovs up towards uh, up towards the heaven area. That means if there's any counter terrorists which are rotating into heaven, they're going to have to wait behind the mollies. They're going to have to sit on the ladder and just wait, which is going to eat into their time. It's going to make it very difficult for them. So if you can't take heaven, stop them from being able to take it back by constantly recycling mollies. You could also throw a grenade up here. Uh, sorry, uh, smoke up here, and you can also throw nades, for example. So if you can't take it, make sure you use your utility to hold them back behind it and stop them from having any form of use on it. If they, if the CTs have heaven control, it's going to be very easy for them to retake site. You can throw molotovs from up here. You can throw nades uh, down. There's good flashbangs that you can do uh, to easily peek out with. Um, there's lots and lots of stuff that you can do from heaven and there's lots and lots of stuff that you can do from me You're typically already going to have these two positions because this is where you came from but after plant if you can't get heaven or um, Or the main control then go back take squeaky take lobby Make sure that no one's rotating up from ramp because at least then you have something that's the basic concept of what you do as a terrorist and how you fight against that as a counter terrorist now B site a little bit of a different story as I already said, the counter terrorists are typically going to be holding from um, from the primary zones. So, what you need to do is either take take it completely away from them, or eliminate the ability for them to, to get uh, any form of uh, any form of kills or, or fighting back resistance from those areas. So, what we can say, we'll take the first zone right here. We mentioned ramp. Now, there's a couple of things, a couple of ways you can deal with this. The typical way that most pro teams do is, let's say, they'll uh, smoke the right side and they'll molly the uh, the left side. Now, what that means is, you basically you can come up through radiator, uh, radi uh, sorry, control. You've con you've got control of the control primary zone as the terrorist side. You can smoke off the right side and you can molly the left, which basically means if there's any enemies, they're going to have to sit behind and wait it out. There's not really much they can do. They could all group up here, but these two choke points are very, very dangerous, which means removing that area from the opponents as you're taking the site is a much better option. Pushing it on the terror side is quite dangerous because it's the main rotate point for the outside player, for the ramp player, for potentially anyone playing heaven. So if you can't take it, my advice, do something similar to that. You can either rotate mollies through, as I mentioned before. You can smoke off both sides. You can smoke off the right. You can smoke off the left. Obviously, that's a bad smoke. Um, so if you can't take it, try and remove it. As for control, if you're not directly taking control, then obviously, as I mentioned, if you're coming, let's say, out of single into the site, you can throw uh, molotovs up towards control. You can throw grenades into control. Uh, you can potentially smoke off control. Uh, Again, through obviously not that smoke, but a smoke that would basically land into a position like here if you're coming through single. So again, if you can't take it, try to remove it from the opponents. My recommendation would be always try to take it, and if that's not possible, then look towards that utility to push them back. And the same for double doors. Now, my biggest recommendation for double doors is remove the double doors. Now, if you're a counter-terrorist, why this is good? 
If the enemies can play with the double doors, it's going to make it quite difficult for you. Uh, if you've got a smoke, you're going to smoke the doors anyway, which means that if the door is there or the door isn't there, you're going to put a smoke there regardless. So what I would say is if you're a counter-terrorist and you're attacking the B site, I would typically remove this door that's going to allow you to fight any players that potentially could have just been sitting behind the door waiting. Uh, they're going to have to play an angle like this, which is a little bit, um, a little bit worse off for the terrorist side. And it's going to allow you to throw better utility. For example, you could throw a Molotov better from the CT side uh, um, in, into that area to stop them from to stop any terrorists from basically sitting here and just waiting and then opening the door when the time comes. So, as a counter terrorist, if you're looking towards a double door area as the primary zone. If you don't have control of it, your typical take back is I would remove the door if you have the option to because it's going to allow some better use of, uh, of play. If you have no smokes, probably not a good recommendation because uh, you could use that door as a little bit of cover when you're retaking the site. Uh, as for the terrorist side, my recommendation would be if you take this area, keep the doors up, don't remove them and play with the doors so keep them closed when the time comes if they're uh, using the after plant or whatever then uh, sorry if they're diffusing the bomb then you can open the doors and be a nuisance to them so good place to take as well as control as well as ramp the two main areas as a terrorist that you want to take control of or to put pressure onto ramp and control you take these two areas from the opponent so you put very high pressure on these areas it's going to be the very difficult for the enemies to retake. If they want to retake through this single door, they have an incredibly small choke point to fight from. If they want to fight through this area right here, again, they have a much smaller choke point. They have to watch every angle as they come out of here. They have to watch towards ramp. They have to watch up towards um, the catwalk. They have to watch towards sight, and they have to watch towards dark. So they have all of these areas to watch from. Whereas with radio, any CTs can easily just jump out, they've only really got a few angles to look at, it's not as bad. You can throw good utility from here, very very easy to retake from. Same with ramp, you can throw good smokes, you can throw good molotovs, you can throw nades from this area, there's good flashbangs that you can do which don't blind you, you can uh, bank flashbangs which land uh, just below here so that if anyone's door you can basically run straight out and start fighting without being blind by the flashbang which lands down here for example so there's lots you can do if you're a counter terrorist and have ramp and control so take those areas and as i mentioned for a there's a lot of ct you can do from heaven and from main so take those areas so that's my overview of the primary zones uh that's the main point of this map is the after plants you have to really nail in those primary zones now let's talk about uh, secondary zones so i mentioned it before there's three main secondary zones on this map and they work really, really well together because they can all three be controlled basically at the same time. Now, this can't be done on any other map, and I'll give you some examples. Let's take Overpass. I think we went through this map either, I think, two weeks ago. Now, there's three prime, there's three secondary zones to this map. There's the CT spawn, there's the T spawn, and there is the connector pass-through. So... If you want to control the enemies rotating from A to B, if you want to control the CTs rotating from A to B, then your main way you're going to do it is through these two angles, and you've barely, you've not got a chance to control them rotating through CT, which means they can easily get from A to B, no problem. Now, if we look at Mirage, it's the same situation. If you're a terrorist and you want to control them passing all the way to B, they can go through CT spawn, they can go through T spawn, and they can go through mid. Now, the two areas as a terrorist you have control of are these two areas right here which means they can still rotate through CT and not have a problem. Now that always means the enemies have the ability to rotate from one side to the other relatively easily without too much pressure. Now let's have a look at Nuke. So there's three main rotation points for this map if you want to go from A to B or from any form of CT control down to B or up to A. That's Vents, which is this area right here. That's the vent right here and down here. That's Secret which is this area right here. And the final one is ramp. So ramp right here down to this area right here. Now, what's unique about these three positions, uh, the rotation zones through one side to the other, is the terrorists can have control of all three of them. Now, what I mean is, let's say you, have, you are up on Twinkie or up on Silo, you can watch down towards Secret. If you're in 
um, in Squeaky. Let's move this player. In fact, let's get another player. If you're in C uh, Squeaky, you can watch towards vents. And if you have a guy towards ramp, he can either listen for information or he can peek uh, this angle later on in the round to catch any counter terrorists basically rotating through ramp. Which means the difference between nuke and the secondary zones and the other maps is that the terrorists can control all three rotation points at one time. Uh, at all time, basically. Or if they're not controlling them, they can easily get information on them. For example, it's very easy with a standard default to control both events and secret uh, with two players. Now that means, in order for a player to go down to B, they had to have gone through ramp if they hadn't gone through these two positions. Now we can flip that in every way possible. Let's say instead of having a guy up in silo, you have a guy ramp listening for information, and you have a guy secret listening for information. That means if there's a guy who is now B, he had to have potential, or he, he should have gone through secret. Unless he was there at the beginning of the round, he must have gone through secret. Which means in order to go through secret, basically they were either the garage player or they were the main player. And they've gone down into secret and down through B. Because they haven't gone through vent, because you know they haven't, and they haven't gone through ramp, which means you know they haven't. Which now means the outside could be weak. And if you have control of, let's say, you don't have control of vent, but you have control of ramp and secret. Now, that means if there's a player on B, or you hear steps underneath on B, that either had to be the A main player or an A player, or uh, that means the outside player has potentially rotated in to A and gone down secret. Which now means either the A site's weak, or outside is weak. Because the ramp player wouldn't have rotated all the way up heaven and down towards vents. Which means Nuke is an incredibly special map because you can, can dictate as the terrorist side where the enemies rotate through and in doing so you can gain the information to figure out where the rotation came from and now where on the map it's weak. Now there are some exceptions to this. If they have the float player, the float could rotate through any of those positions and you won't necessarily know where he's gone or where uh, if it was a player that was static to a site or if it was the float player or for example the float could already be under the map uh, at the very beginning of the round and when you try to keep hold of let's say two of these positions and you might think that the float or the, the player underneath the map for example has gone through ramp but in reality he already vent dove he, he dived down the vents very early in the game so this is some things, the one thing that you have to be a little bit aware of is that uh, the float, the typical CT setup is with a float player, which means sometimes he can already be under the map before you are in position to gain information. So secondary zones are incredibly important on, them, on this map because you can dictate the flow of how enemies rotate from one site to the other. So if you want to look at it the opposite way, if players are coming up from B to A, so they also have to pass through these three areas uh, and secret as well. So if we highlight them here, it's here, here, and here. Which means if you know they have players under the map and you have control of, let's say, ramp and you have control of secret, then they had to have come through vent. Which means that if they had many players under, then potentially ramp could be weak right now if you were to attack ramp because they rotated their players through vent which means they might have gone let's say through control up through vent or they might have gone up through single up to vent so you can gain a lot of information from control in their secondary zones that's something that you really have to be aware of zoning is one of the most secondary zones are the, one of the most important concepts of nuke because you can you can mind like control the mind of the opponent and make them not understand how you know all the information of where they're rotating, who's rotated, and how they're doing it. So, this brings us on to our main points now uh, of this, and we're going to look at map control. We'll have a look at, and then the setups which basically go with that. So, for the CT side, there's five main areas for map control. We have squeaky, lobby, garage, or outside, and then we have secret to that, and then trophy or radio. So let's highlight those and let's talk about them. So we have trophy or radio, we have squeaky, we have the lobby area, we have the outside, so I'm just going to put an X, and then we have secret. So 
as a counter terrorist, it's in your interest to potentially take maybe one of these areas if you're in a little bit of trouble. Uh, now, you could have your float player working on this, or you could do it as a team base. Um, now, if you have one of these areas, it's going to free up the ability for one of your players to potentially easily rotate, or it's going to allow the ability for you to gain more information. So let's take, let's say you take squeaky control, you'll also have information for lobby. If you take trophy control, you'll have information for lobby. If you take lobby control, you can uh, force the opponents who potentially could be sitting in the trophy area to either push ramp, or they have to come back and fight you. And if there's any enemies uh, squeaky, then they're going to have to obviously fight you unless they push through uh, towards A. And then you can exploit that with your outside player looking towards um, looking towards that door. Now let's say you have outside control, which is very typical for, for Nuke uh, nowadays, is you'll have one of your players outside either controlling or dictating the, the way outside is played. Then uh, you're going to free up a lot of of headspace for the guys who are playing the A site and who are potentially playing under towards B because if you have outside control they typically shouldn't be able to come through main they shouldn't be able to go through heaven they won't be able to come through secret um, and there's no way that they can potentially get an easy backstab so outside definitely a place to always have control of if you, if possible and uh, squ uh, secret is an area which is under abused and definitely needs higher lookout. So there's two main players who can do it. You can have your float potentially go underground straight away and straight towards secret, or you can have your outside player instantly go to secret at the beginning of the round. Uh, but then obviously they're going to understand that there's no one holding outside if they can't find that player. So they're the five main areas where you take map control on the CT side. Now let's look on the T side. So outside and secret, T main, heaven, ramp, and vents. So Ramp, if they take ramp control, it's very difficult for you as a counter-terrorist. If they take uh, secret control or outside, then they can control the ability for you to rotate. If, for example, they have the whole of outside, so including towards the CT area, you have to be hyper aware of them potentially coming uh, towards ramp. They can go through heaven towards A. They can come through hell. Um, and this entrance right here, the CT entrance, they can come through main, and they can go obviously down secret, and they can even leave and go all the way back. So if you as a, a terrorist have full full control of the outside, you are in a in a incredible position of power. So this is definitely something that I would look into if you're looking towards strats. Try and dominate the full outside rather than just one area. Typically, it's seen quite a lot nowadays that. Uh, people are using the 2018, I believe, or 20 early 2019 strat from Astralis, where you basically throw uh, three smokes, which block off the ability for the opponents to know if you're down secret. This is slowly, or not slowly, but this is quickly leaving the meta because a lot of teams understand how it works. Uh, you're basically trying to get in the mind of the opponents, and whenever this happens nowadays, you're typically able to react to it quite, quite quickly, which means looking towards trying to gain full control of outside again, like how it was back in 2016, uh, but maybe doing a couple more things like looking at the secondary zones on top of that, you can definitely screw with the opponent's head and make them not understand what to do at any point. Uh, and obviously ramp control, again, if you have control of ramp as a terrorist, they're going to have to be aware of heaven, they're going to have to be aware of you potentially coming outside behind them, which means this player is now going to have to watch uh, two locations at once. Um, you could go back to lobby and then they won't have a clue. You can go underground towards B, uh, which you can then control vents through um, for your secondary zones, and you can also control secret uh, through through silo, which then means they they're going to find it incredibly difficult to get players down to B if you have ramp control if you're also controlling the secondary zones. Uh, and then obviously T main, uh, CT main, sorry, again, another position. If you have control of this, if you, let's say, go outside and get control of T main, they're going to, again, they're going to have to be hyper aware of too many positions. Gaining any of these map controls is going to make it very, very difficult for the opponents to sit there and comfortably be able to cover all of the angles. They're going to have a lot more places to have to look, and their float player is going to have to make more critical decisions. So... T-side nuke is definitely a part of 
map control. Map control is essential. If you gain any of these positions, it's going to make it very difficult for the opponents to think straight. Now let's have a look at the setups. Now, basically, this setup right here is going to work for everything. So one, two, one, with one guy as a float. Now I'll quickly again show you what that is. So one, two on A site somewhere, and one outside with one float which goes anywhere. This setup is going to work for everything that I mentioned now. However, you can tailor this float player, or you could tailor a couple of players to basically make some uh, setups work a little bit more. So let's say we're looking at map control. So we'll have a look at some map control setups for the CT side. As we said, map control is quite important for the CT side. Uh, it can really, really hinder the ability for the opponents to do very much. Um, so definitely something to look into. So let's take Squeaky. So you could, for example, bring your float player onto the B site, onto the A site, which would then set up for a 131, which would allow you to put two players or potentially even three players towards Squeaky and easily take Squeaky control. Let's have a look at Lobby. 131 again. So exact same setup. So you bring your float player or potentially the outside player and your float goes outside. Uh, and you can easily pu pump through players either through Squeaky together or through uh, main and you can get lobby control super, super easily. Um, now, moving on from that is the one two two setup. So what I mean by that is one inside, two on, uh, sorry, one ramp, two on A and two outside. Now what that's going to allow you to do is uh, if they're potentially fighting heavy outside, you can show them heavy resistance from two players outside and allow your two players inside to either push straight through main into lobby, knowing that they haven't got as many players there, or potentially pushing squeaky, squeaky through to lobby, knowing that, again, they don't have players there. Um, so, again, another setup, which is basically moving your float player to the outside. It's always about the float. This map is all about that one player. So he's got to be in the right positions at the right time to make the, the right calls uh, for your CT side. Garage are outside, so we're looking at, again using the float setup. Two, one, uh, one, two, one, and then one float. Now, I want to show you a couple things which you can do in order to strengthen your outside with this float player, which is what I believe that a lot of teams are really, really not doing well right now. So you can go for the standard thing. You could either play this guy main, which means this player right here only really has to focus on these two positions and this guy can assist him either potentially playing heaven whatso uh, whatsoever but you can do this setup right here you can also play a second guy in garage for example you could have him holding back with an orb you could have him holding heaven which means that when this guy gets contact this guy in garage could peek for example or this guy can take the the aggression and this guy can hide and when the time comes he can then backstab from behind for example your float could go underground at the beginning of the round and come up towards secret uh, and potentially either hide in secret or just wait down here and have this guy distract and then uh, have some assistance here. You can also do other things like this player could throw flashbangs, for example, if there's a guy secret. You can have this guy secret here waiting and then throwing flashbangs over towards red when the information's heard uh, and uh, exploiting that. And with this setup, you can also have two guys going aggressive. Uh, to get full control of outside. Uh, but this is something which definitely should uh, be looked into. You could also follow in with a third player if you really wanted to go aggressive with three players outside, but it's preferably not recommended because if they understand heavy resistance outside, they're going to instantly push on the inside uh, towards A or towards ramp. So I'd stick to these setups. Fairly simple. Secret control. Again, using utilizing the float method, as I mentioned before, we, we mentioned secret by having one guy um, one guy underground at the beginning of the round and potentially going secret uh, with your float. Or you could do exactly the same as what I mentioned before in having two guys go instantly outside and one trying to work their way down a secret. Now, the way you could do this is by potentially smoking here at the beginning of the round and throwing a couple of flashbangs uh, up in the sky and then getting this player to instantly run towards secret. But secret, secret control, definitely something to take control of. If you have secret control and they don't know you have it as a counter-terrorist, then they're going to find it 
a lot more difficult to pull off fakes, for example, if they're doing the Astralis smoke setup. Uh, if they want to go late round towards secret and they think your only guy outside is garage and they've smoked off garage, etc, etc, they're going to be very surprised when you have an extra guy there. So secret control is sort of a must uh, when you're looking at your float not really doing anything. And trophy or radio, there's two setups that I really like about this. It's moving your float towards ramp, so having two guys ramp, uh, two and A and one outside. The outside player doesn't always have to play here, by the way, I'm just putting him outside. What I mainly mean by this is this outside player can play potentially heaven uh, towards CT spawn, he could play main, he could play garage, he could play towards secret, or he could play on even on top of the garage or on top of the containers here, or even... Um, and anywhere outside that you can gain information is basically where this play needs to be. It doesn't have to be somewhere specific. Uh, anyway, back to the setup. Moving your float towards ramp, and then obviously pushing from here with two players. You could also distract from the guys in A. They could throw flashbangs through. Uh, they could throw molotovs that land deep, for example, secret, or molotovs that land in here to make them think, pull the attention towards you on the A site. Uh, all the other setup is... 113. So putting three players CT and 1A and one outside. Now, my recommendation for this is if you're playing 1A, hold a primary zone, either main or heaven. Now, if you hold heaven, they're going to easily be able to molly it. So I'd probably recommend go main. You can potentially work with outside. And uh, if they take A site, you can basically just sit main and wait. Uh, and that will allow your outside guy to come. These guys can either go back towards heaven, etc, etc. But what this is going to allow you to do is if you're quiet and you're you're quick about it, then you could either take an AWP here, you could take an extra float, and you could push in with either lots of utility or no utility and not show the opponents that you're there. Uh, and just try and take the, take the radio control. If you take radio control from the opponents, they're going to be forced either to go through A or they're going to have to go outside. Uh, and obviously they have a lot of options outside, but let's say you're playing two players outside, then they're basically going to have to come through the A site. So that's some recommendations for what I would do. I would basically always stick to the float. Just if you're sticking to this method, utilize the float player so much in every different position to completely get in the heads of the opponents. Never play one position if you're the float player. Uh, always be mixing it up. If they're going heavy outside, dive down straight into vent at the beginning of the game, or go straight down ramp and go towards the B site. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, if they're going heavy A, then obviously go heaven straight away and assist the two players on A. Uh, if they're going heavy ramp, then uh, doing a, a crossfire setup with the ramp guy. Just utilizing yourself a lot more. You could also play, if you're the float player, playing heaven with an org or taking an orb towards heaven or taking an orb towards CT to be that extra player just being an absolute nuisance on the outside. There's lots and lots of stuff that this float player can do and should do and that's going to help you either as a player or as a team improve. Now the T setups, I'm not going to go into mad detail here. I'm basically just going to say them show their strengths and uh, that'll really be it for today. So the two ones that we already went through, 122, uh, I believe we went through, let's have a quick look. Yeah, 122 and 113. These are very good at basically putting pressure and gaining information across the whole map. Now, what I would say is, is always have positions in which you can control the secondary zones. So all, th all four of these defaults are basically going to allow if your players decide, if you're in-game leader and your players decide you're going to hit a site at one specific moment and you have a player which isn't in a position to help out at that moment, then having that player controlling the secondary zone. Now what I mean by this, let's say you choose a different type of default, let's say a 2 on 2 So you have two players towards ramp. Uh, let's clear this up. Two players towards ramp, one towards lobby, and two towards outside. Now let's say outside find the opportunity to go and attack quickly and try and take the outside. Now that means these players could potentially go ramp because the, the ramp guy might rotate either towards heaven or he might then be left alone as if there is a heaven player or a guy playing towards here. Um, helping the ramp guy, he's going to have rotate outside. So these guys could do something and they can control the secondaries. And however, Lobby can't really do very much from this position. So what Lobby might want to do 
is control the vent. Stop them from going and rotating down vent. Now that would be my recommendation if you're looking at some form of default. If you're looking at players being able to quickly attack a certain area, if you have players in another area not doing very much, then very quickly responding by controlling the secondary zones. So for example, 2 on 2 as I said, if it's vice versa and the ramp guys go and attack ramp straight away because they see an opportunity to kill this guy, then potentially you could have one of the out guy, outside guys rotate back in, and the, f the last guy here controlling the secret rotate, either going up on silo and looking down at secret, or being down here and watching secret from this angle right here, potentially getting red and watching secret making sure no one goes down. and. You can have this player watching vent again or rotating instantly quick through. So 2 on 2 is good for being able to control the secondary zones and being able to quickly attack ramp or outside at the same time. Now the other setup which I would recommend is something which is barely done. Uh, it's not used at all uh, and I think it should be utilized a lot more. As far as defaults, it's used in a strategy type of form where people preset rounds. However, defaults uh, side it's not as much, which would be one outside, three inside, and one towards the ramp. Now, again, we can utilize those secondary zones. Let's say you get an opening kill on A site, either through you could potentially have guys throwing Molotovs into the site and trying to get kills with that, or you could be nade off the door, for example, and trying to get a kill on anyone holding towards vents, etc. If you have that kill and you push three guys instantly into the site, uh, you could quickly rotate these players in or potentially go and out out attack outside and go through main or attack and go through heaven or rotate back around with both players and instantly go towards A. So this is a very flexible setup in the ability to rotate quickly. Or these players can control the secondary zones, which means this player could control anyone coming out through ramp towards A and this guy outside can control anyone going outside through main towards A. So this is allowing more flexibility with the secondary zones, which again, as I said before, is incredibly important on this map. So those would be my two big recommendations for different defaults. What it's going to allow you to do is put pressure in certain areas and control the secondary zones in others. Uh, and it's a little bit different to the, the very standard norm, which is basically a lot of outside pressure with a little bit of inside pressure. And that's where I'm going to summarize it up today. We could go in a hell of a lot more detail and there's a lot more stuff that we could do, but I think that's for a later date. Um, and hopefully this is this is more of the ability to overview the map and show a couple of different sort of default setups, uh, maybe strategies, CT side holds, etc., etc. So I hope people are able to take something from this. Um, I think we've covered all of the basics of the last few maps that we've done. We've done Mirage, we've done Inferno, we've done Overpass, we've done Nuke. So that's four maps. We've basically got three more to go. And I think this format will stick to this general overview. And in future lessons, we will maybe come back to certain maps and have a look uh, in a little bit more detail. So that's all I've really got for today. I know we didn't spend very much time in the server. Uh, again, it was more on the theoretical side and looking at the map overview from uh, a drawing board point of view. However, Hopefully you've taken something from this. As I mentioned before, if you want to have a look at this document or overlook this document when maybe you look back at the VOD, then in the description of this video uh, after it's finished or even now, there will be a link to this document if you want to find it. Um, so you can easily get that there. Right, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in again. And I hope you guys have learned something from this. And that will uh, that will be the summary of Nuke. So have a good evening, guys, and uh, until next time.